Now this is the power of the iMasters because that they are using the AI, the AI power intelligent ONM for data center network. So it go through three processes. The three processes are collection, analysis, and the decision. Here some of this information are in a very high level. So the information collection from the experts experience. So these are being coded into the iMaster with Huawei experience, continuous learning and training based on the real site for which is some machine learning as well as the data center holistic uh, data service flow data and the telemetry data these are the information they capture on your life so it went through the analysis this analysis will go through the knowledge inference engine which is basically a artificial intelligent engine and these are all information they can do include exceptional detection before things happen the ai is going to do the prediction or if let's say things already happen they can do a root cause analysis as well as a risk prediction so the knowledge inference is based on this particular model data cleansing data cleaning ai exception identification network object modeling and finally they are going to give you the decision which is include manual ratification or intent based loop closing so some of the recommendation include port isolation configuration low back capacity expansion recommendation so these are good news for those who maintain the network so let's look into huawei cloud campus autonomous driving network solution so some of these uh, network so let's look into the high level of this cloud campus autonomous driving you can see here we have on the top our iMaster NCE who are using the Netcov and Yang model that can manage on the large and medium size network as well as the small campus or the branch we also can do that as the when so you can apply for office or you can apply for different virtual network okay which have the access control policy bandwidth and priority so these are some of these so here we have all the benefit of using the cloud campus autonomous driving which include fast network deployment improving deployment efficiency by 600 percent uh, we have fast service provisioning improving user experience by 100 percent and fast intelligent onm improving network performance over 50 percent and ultimately what is the autonomous driving uh, network is all about now let's look into the benefit of using iMaster for device plug and play. Here, if you have a device, a new device, we can use three types of deployment. The first deployment is using the scanning of the barcode. So we have the device. These are the new devices that we have. It's going to scan the barcode. This information is going to send to the iMaster and the deployment will be deployed to the device. So this is easiest deployment we can have. Hence, we have the plug and play. The second deployment is using the HCP base. So again, we still have the iMaster NCE. The device is online and the HCP is going to give an IP address. Then the information of this DHCP, once it's registered using the option configure, is going to send to the iMaster and iMaster can configure the device. And finally, we also can use registration query center. The difference over here is rather than using a DHCP, we are using a query center. So that's the main difference here. We need to do a pre-configuration as usual, information synchronization. So this is where the registration query center and the iMaster are being synchronized, which is in the cloud. Obtain registration information and this uh, device will be registered. So this is quite handy, especially you have uh, access point and you also can use it for switches or routers. Now next we look into the free mobility policy management based on security groups. So free mobility means that enable user to have consistent network rights and security policy regardless of their location and IP address. For example, I have user A here, B and user C. Once they get authenticated, the free mobility will kick in. The free mobility consists of the user who are in the security group. So each of the user may have a different group and each of the group may have different policy rights as well as the experience policy. So here are the details. We use the security group for the user using the same policy. Second, we define the security group based on the permission and the user experience policy and deliver the policy to the network device. That the security group is authorized to a user after they pass access authentication and after user traffic enter the network, network device enforce policy based on the source and the destination of the security group. Now because that they are using the iMaster NCE, 
we have the visibility on where the user and what is the user can have on their user rights. Okay, so there is another benefit of using the uh, controller base. Here we can use the controller to merge the wire and the wireless. So we have three mode here. The first mode is using the controller base. So in the controller base or standalone AC, which is an access controller, this mode poses a wireless traffic bottleneck and increased 40 node. So because when we pass through the AP, the AP need to pass through the standalone before they actually go out. So here we have the bottleneck. Wire and wireless management is independent. Wire and wireless authentication point is separate. So another mode is to use the access controller card on the switch. So an access controller card is installed on the switch and this is a hardware level conversion. So this is preferred over the standalone AC. And the third mode over here is to use a native AC. Native AC means that the switch integrate the access controller function, eliminating wireless traffic forwarding bottleneck and reduce the fault node. Wire and wireless are centrally managed. You can see that there's no add-on card over here. So on Huawei certain high-end model, they have this native AC integrate on the switch. The benefit are unified management and converge forwarding and wired and wireless services, converge management for wired and wireless user and the gateway converge, converge authentication and unified the wire and wireless policy execution. So these are the wired and the wireless conversion using native AC. And I also explain that there are three modes that we can use, both wire and wireless. So here we have the intelligent terminal identification ensure secure access. Now this is a new features on the uh, iMaster NCE. So for example, a university, they may have a lot of smart terminal. So this terminal information is collected by IT department of colleges, include the MAC address and is going to enter this information into the system. So it's difficult and it's error prone. So in an enterprise, 100 plus authentication fault reporter per user is difficult to locate the access spoofing because they can change the MAC address. So now with the modern network, we are using the iMaster NCE. It already have built in terminal fingerprint library, which consists of more than 1000 plus office or IOT terminal. So what's the benefit of doing so? So firstly, they can recognize the terminal example, the printer, they can recognize the MAC address. So the administrator do not need to enter the MAC address because it's automatically recognized by the iMaster NCE. Second is the terminal type base. Uh, example here will be your CCTV, okay? So it automatically added to the video surveillance group, is configured as a VIP user. And we also have this uh, terminal base on IP phone and PC. So this is the feature on the iMaster NCE with the built-in uh, terminal fingerprint. Then we also have a hierarchical QoS user and application based QoS. Let's look into what does this mean. User and application based QoS policy ensure experience of high priority user and application. Let's look into the challenge over here. Traditional QoS policy are invalid for video services. For example, building surveillance scenario, wireless video service of common user increase occupying a large number of network resources and cause network congestion. So it's because that if we are going to run a video surveillance, and video surveillance will use a lot of bandwidth. So we need to prioritize them and how we can do that. First, if we are using iMaster NCE, we define what is a VIP user. If you still remember just now on the previous slide that I mentioned, CCTV surveillance will automatically categorize as a VIP. So this VIP user and common user will be differentiated. So as you can see in this diagram, VIP and the user will be differentiated in a different uh, QoS. Second, we have to schedule user and application queue based on priority and of user and application. And finally, the third step is to support native AC and independent AC deployment. So now you see that all this come into Converge where the wired wireless video service users going through the iMaster NCE allow you to prioritize the traffic and at the same time forward the traffic efficiently. 
Here, let's talk about the AI intelligent operation and management of a campus network. This is our traditional way of managing our network. So in traditional NMS, we are using SNMP. This is our trusted protocol, simple network management protocol that allow us to do topology management, performance management, alarm management, configuration management. So these are device-centric methods. User experience cannot be detected. So they do have a fault trigger response, meaning that they are not proactively. Only when they are fault, then the alarm will be triggered. So potential fault cannot be identified. And this also rely on professional engineer to locate the fault on site. So experienced engineer still required. So if we are using the iMaster NCE campus inside instead of SNMP, now we are using telemetry. So telemetry is faster as compared to SNMP. So what's the benefit of using a telemetry campus inside? It allows you to have the visual user experience management. They also can give you the user journey playback. So in another word, we can go to the iMaster NC Campus Insight to check if the user having some issue, where is the issue started and play the packet, where is this packet landed into which AP, which AC, which router, which switches. And we can see where is the latency, where is the problem. So we can potential, uh, potentially look for the fault identification. We can use it to do a root cause identification as well as predictive network optimization. So they have intelligent built-in powered by AI. So the benefit over here is that telemetry-based second-level data collection visualize experience for each user and each application in real time. So rather than we need to wait for hours or days, so now we just have to wait for minutes level potential fault identification. You can identify the fault in minutes means that we can able to solve it faster. So identify potential fault based on dynamic baseline and big data correlation analysis. Accurately locate root cause of fault, KPI association analysis and protocol tracing. And they also allow you to do a predictive network optimization. So which means that even things are not happened yet, maybe there are some trend to tell you that this SAP is having some issue. So they can predict how many days or weeks before the real failure happened. So AI is used to intelligently analyze the AP load trend and implement predictive optimization on wireless network. So these are the iMaster NCE campus insight with telemetry and AI power. So how about the iMaster in uh, access point, AI power intelligent radio calibration. So here we have our scenario. Traditional radio calibration cannot achieve expected result. So in our traditional way of calibrating the access point radio, we based on engineer experience, the calibration is time consuming and error prone and the calibration result is unstable. So we want to reduce the user or the engineer experience because experience are not constants. So even with the engineer, they still need to calibrate. So calibration based on real-time radio in interference does not consider device load changes and calibration result cannot be ensured. Which means that even the engineer already calibrated, wireless in the network sometimes may change. For example, there may be interference that is unknown early on and after collaboration, these interference are introduced. So that's why the calibration may not be effective anymore. So what is the solution then? So here we have this iMaster NCE that allow you to do a radio calibration and they can have this real-time and historical data collection. So how it works? This is how it works. So the iMaster uh, NCE is powered by AI is going to do the calibration based on all these factor, which include optimal channel selection, frequency bandwidth selection, and power adjustment. So this is a constant type of calibration. As you can see that this is a constant circle. So while it's already calibrated, it still check the statistic by reporting the user performance, number of user, channel usage, signal interference ratio, and the frequency bandwidth or the power information. And this information will keep feedback into the iMaster as a closed loop. So once this information is being sent, and if let's say there are interference 
suddenly there is a curve. So this information will fit back into the eye master and this eye master is going to calibrate again constantly. So with this, we will able to achieve a highly optimized wireless environment. Now this is being tested by a third party organization uh, by Trolley. So this is before the radio calibration is only 125 megabit. But after using iMaster NCE, it achieved 58% improvement to 198 megabit. So for the interference, before we have about 5.5% interference, after calibrate, it reduced close to 50% to become 2.8%. So this is after the iMaster NCE calibration and this is being tested by a third party organization.